Hello and welcome to Parent TV. My name is Aja Cortizo and I am the Assistant Head Teacher here at Glynn. I am in charge of learning and teaching and in this video we're going to talk about knowledge organisers. Knowledge organisers are a crucial learning resource for all of our students. They are a one page, sometimes slightly more, summary of the core knowledge that all students need for a topic that they are learning about. Students will be provided knowledge organisers in all of their subjects for each half term. These will also be available through students' Google Classrooms. They may be provided in hard copy, but they will also be available following the links on the website. Knowledge organisers are a research-based tool and resource for students to go away and make sure that they have filled all of the gaps in their knowledge. Whilst knowledge organisers originate from other schools in our, the education community, Glynn have been trialling these with various students for the past two years. In the first year, the trial was conducted with maths and science students and the findings showed that knowledge organisers have a very positive effect on students' ability to understand, retain and remember key knowledge and then apply it in their learning. Last year, this trial was widened at Glynn School and included students from a range of year groups, um, all the way from Key Stage 3 up to Key Stage 5. And again, the results showed that they were very, very useful tools and have a direct impact on progress and learning. This is an example of a knowledge organiser. This particular example is a Key Stage 4 GCSE History Knowledge Organiser. Uh, they may include information about the number of the topic and the content that they contain. Knowledge organisers will look different, but they will all contain certain fundamental principles, such as key terms, which will have key words with definitions. They may have key information in bold. They may have bullet points to support memorising key information. They may have key concepts or ideas, and then various different information that is required. They may include, like here, a table which allows balance, or in this Key Stage 3 technology example, it will have lots of procedural knowledge with images and diagrams to accompany it. Here, this is giving examples of procedures or processes that the students need to understand and remember and commit to memory, and they have accompanying images to support the student's understanding and then application of this. We've looked at a knowledge organiser in a bit more detail. It's important to note that these can come in many forms and will look slightly different for different subjects. What all knowledge organisers have in common is that students will use these through various techniques that we're going to share with you to commit those core knowledge and key facts to memory. Whilst it's important to note that knowledge organisers are a very beneficial tool in supporting students in becoming very fluent in the core knowledge of their subjects and that that is very important, knowledge organisers are not everything a student will need. They are not all of the knowledge or certainly not all of the skills and application that students will need to succeed in those subjects. How will teachers be using knowledge organisers then in lessons and for homework with students? This is going to happen in numerous ways, but for, first and foremost, they will be shared with students via Google Classroom. Students are very welcome to then print these off and in fact some of the activities we suggest may work better with being printed whilst others may work better with having them online to cut and paste from. Either way we recommend students either download them and save them into their own Google areas or that they print those out in hard copy. Teachers will be providing these at various points through a topic. In some cases, these will be provided at the start of a topic and will be referred to throughout the lessons so that students can orientate themselves and navigate their way through an entire topic, coming back to a big picture. Teachers will also be using them in lessons um, as a supporting tool when they are explaining or teaching key vocabulary or key content and also they are an excellent place for students to refer back to when they are stuck or have forgotten something perhaps before asking their teacher so that they can build in some independence. Also, in lesson time, teachers will be using knowledge organisers in various different ways to check how much of that knowledge has been committed to a student's long-term memory. 
This will involve lots of different ways of asking them how much they can recall or retrieve from memory. This is really important part of how teachers are going to find out and pinpoint any gaps in knowledge which might later prevent success or fluid application. This regular quizzing in lesson times is a proven part and through research we know that this testing effect really helps to build long-term memory. It stores the knowledge but also allows students to be able to get at that knowledge, to recall or retrieve it really quickly. A really important skill for being uh, exam ready for example. Through this regular testing, teachers will be able to find out where there are common gaps or individual students have gaps and then they will redirect them to the knowledge organisers to perhaps fill those in or to teach those again. Now we have covered how teachers are going to use knowledge organisers, it's really important that we share with you, parents, how students are going to use them. Although teachers will be using knowledge organisers regularly in lessons and practising testing and retrieving information from them, it's crucial that students build the independence to be able to do that at home. This will be a really important strand of our homework strategy here at Glynn and will form the main part of our consolidation of learning homework tasks. In these homework tasks, teachers in various lessons will set students something called self-quizzing. This can take numerous forms, but basically is where students are checking at home how much of knowledge organisers they remember from memory without looking. That's really important. And second of all, they will involve going back and checking how much they knew and to find out for themselves where those knowledge gaps are. All students this year from their form tutor have been provided with a self-quizzing homework book. They have one book and all of their teachers in any subject can set homework for self-quizzing in there. It's essentially a rough book and is mostly for use for the students, although teachers will of course check how, how students are getting along with those. As a new tool, we won't expect for our students to know exactly what self-quizzing homework looks like and how to do that well at home. So, teachers will be showing uh, their students in lessons what that looks like and they'll be modelling to them how to successfully self-quiz in different subjects. Students will then be set the homework via Google Classroom and complete it in their self-quizzing books. Once teachers have shown students how they would like them to use the knowledge organisers in lessons, the expectation is that students will be using knowledge organisers as a core part of their homework. There are many different activities that students can use to engage with and learn and memorise their knowledge organisers. Here we have several. One of the most basic ways, and again in the videos, teachers will model how to do this, is the look, cover, write, check, correct method. Using their self-quizzing book, students would look at the knowledge organiser, cover it up or turn it over, try and write out as much as they can from memory, check what they know and correct it by either correcting any misconceptions or adding in the parts they didn't yet remember. Students can also make flashcards using Q&A from the knowledge on the organiser. They might write Q&A quizzes, which they can share with each other. These are things that you can ask them about and with both of these methods, you can um, quiz your child using these. They can do something really simple as a brain dump or free recall where they just write down everything they know. They can use symbols to uh, assign knowledge to. They can explain out loud about their understanding of the knowledge contained. Uh, they can write the key words. They can use them in sentences or practice their spellings making mnemonics or mind maps as a way to see how much they can remember and also blanking out bits so just covering over or folding the knowledge organiser in half and then trying to remember if you can fill it in perhaps leaving one column say of the key words and then seeing how much they can remember just from those. To support you in our understanding of learning and how knowledge organisers support this there are two further resources to this video that I hope you will find useful. Firstly, we have a video about what is great learning and how learning takes place. And you can scroll through that and there are various things to read and videos accompanying it. This will tell you much more about why self-quizzing is such an effective strategy 
and how knowledge organisers can help with retrieval practice. Secondly, there is a link to a range of videos where teachers are modelling to our students how to self-quiz. These are various strategies that they can look at if they need ideas on how to um, self-quiz for homework. I hope that this video and the other linked documents are really helpful in your understanding of the knowledge organisers and the vital role that they play in learning at Glynn. However, if you have any further questions, then please do email me here at the school. My name is Aja Cortizo and I am the assistant head teacher at Glynn. But also, crucially, your child should be asking their subject teachers because they are the people that will be able to show them how to use these strategies to the best effect in their subjects.